Hey guys, in this video I'll go over radar for the Viper. You can turn it on with the FCR switch here. You can bring up your radar display by pressing FCR. You're going to need the target management switch up, down, left, and right, and you're going to need the SLU switch. When you enter the radar by default, it should be in air-to-air -air mode. If it's not, you can press this button and press CRM, and you can use your SLU to move the cursor around. Now, the radar format is what's called a B-scope. That means that left and right on the radar is left and right in real life, but up and down on the radar is not up and down in real life. Up and down on the radar is range. So things on the bottom of the radar are close to you and things on the top are far away. You can adjust the range here. You can put it all the way out to 160 miles and all the way into five miles. You can also adjust the range with your cursor. If you move it up, it will move out. Also, if you're wondering what this cake symbol is here, that is your current selected waypoint. That was an overview of the radar display. Let's get into the different modes now. Let's do the long range modes first. The first mode I'll go over is RWS, which is range while search. If you're not in RWS mode, you can click the button here until it goes to RWS. Also, if you hold TMS right, it will switch between TWS and RWS. So just be in RWS for now. This is the basic radar mode. As you can see, radar contacts will show up here. You can adjust the angle here. You can have it 30 degrees, 10 degrees, or 60 degrees. You can also adjust the angle by moving your cursor off to the side like this. Here you can adjust the bars. The bars are how much elevation you're scanning. If I set it to one bar, then on my cursor you can see it's scanning from 2,000 feet to 11,000 feet. But if I set it to four bars, it's going from negative 5,000 to 18,000. So the way it works is that at one bar, the radar just scans back and forth. At two bars, it scans, goes up, scans. And at four bars, it scans goes up, scans, goes up, and then once it reaches the top, it goes back to the bottom. So the more bars you have, the more you can see in the sky, but the longer it takes to complete a full scan. And you can actually see this little blue thing here going up and down. That is actually the radar antenna going through all the different bars. Also, you'll notice that when you bring your cursor closer to you, the elevation gets smaller. Here, we're 2,000 to 11,000 feet. And if you take it farther away from you, it gets larger, negative 13 to 26,000. That's because as the radar looks farther out, it can scan a greater part of the sky. You can also adjust the center of the elevation with the antenna elevation switch here. As you can see, I can move the center up and down. So you can do that if you need to. I'm not sure what cont here means. It showed it in the manual, but it didn't say what it did, so I'm not sure. Let's go into how you actually use RWS mode. So like I mentioned earlier, on RWS, all your radar contacts shows up as the squares. If you move your cursor over a contact and press TMS up it will kind of select it. Now this is not really a hard lock, this is just kind of a selection. Now you can actually have two targets selected. If you go over another target and press TMS up you can see it turns it into a big square and you can press TMS right to cycle between the two. So you can kind of have two selected at the same time. And if you press TMS aft, it will drop one of your selections. Now, when you have a target selected, it's still, the radar will still scan, but it will be in kind of a more narrow scan around your selected target. It basically prioritizes this target to keep it updated, but it still scans around it to find other guys. So it kind of prioritizes the target, but it's not exactly a hard lock. Before I show you the other mode, I'm just going to go to the control page here. Now the manual said that most of these functions don't work. The only one that works is the target hits setting. You can set it to one, two, three, or four. So the higher it is, the longer the contacts will stay on your screen. If I set it to one, you can see they go away pretty quickly. If you set it to four, they last longer on your screen. Okay, that was RWS mode. Now let's go into TWS mode, which is track while scan. So you can press this button until you get into TWS, or if you're in RWS mode, you can hold down TMS right, and it switches to TWS. So RWS mode, what we went over earlier, is one of the main radar modes, and TWS is kind of the other main mode. So what track wall scan does is it kind of builds track files on the targets it sees. So right now you see all these small squares, which are raw target hits, which are not track files. But once it, you know, sees the same target for a couple scans, it has solid information about it, it'll turn into a big square, which is a track file. As you can see, this guy is a bigger square 
there now, so he has turned into a track file. So if you have a track file, you can press TMS up on it, and that turns it into a system target. And if you press TMS aft, it turns it back into a track file. Now you can make as many system targets as you want. As you can see, I can just go ahead and turn everybody into a system target if I want to. Now if you have a system target, it doesn't change the way the radar scans. It doesn't really focus on it or anything. It basically just marks it as a target that I'm interested in, but it doesn't change the actual scan of a radar. However, if you press TMS up on a system target, it will turn it into a bugged target, which is kind of like what we had in range wall search. The radar will remain centered on your bugged target to keep it updated. That is the main target you're going to focus on. And if you have other system targets here, if you press TMS right, it will swap through your system targets to select the bugged target. Now there are some other interesting things you can do. First of all, remember I mentioned these little squares are just the raw radar returns. If you want, you can manually turn them into track files. Now the radar automatically does this once it gets solid information about it, but if you want, you can manually just turn them into track files yourself like this. Also, if you keep pressing TMS aft, you can eventually turn everything into a raw target. If I press it once, it got rid of my system track, and I press it again, and now it turned everything into a raw target. Now, this isn't something to worry about. They will eventually turn back into track files like this guy. I think the reason for this feature is because if you keep pressing TMS aft, you can get it back into RWS mode. So if I press TMS aft, it turns everything to a raw target. And if I press TMS aft again, it goes into range wall search mode. And then remember, I can hold TMS right to go back into track wall scan. So that's basically the main difference between range wall search and track wall scan. Range wall search is just kind of like your regular radar mode for finding stuff and then once you find something to engage you can go into track wall scan mode and you can designate your bug target and you can also designate some other system targets and use TMS right to cycle through them. Okay that was track wall scan mode and range wall search mode which are your two main long range radar modes. Before I go into the other radar modes I want to mention a feature really quickly that works with range wall search and also track wall scan. You need to have this button binded. If you you click the pinky button it puts it into expand mode which lets you zoom in on your targets. You can also just press this here if you want. The next long range mode is velocity search. This mode is very simple. You cannot designate any targets or anything like that. It just shows you radar returns. My understanding of this mode is that it allows you to see out further than other modes can. It has greater range. However you can't do much with it. You can't designate targets. It's just meant for finding things that are out far away. But once you want to actually start building track files or designate a target or something, you need to use TWS or RWS. The next thing to go over is single target track. This is basically just a hard lock. With a single target track, it will focus your radar on one plane and it will give you the most accurate information about that plane. However, you can't look at any other targets and also if you have somebody locked up in single target track, they will know that you are locking them. So you can enter it from any of the long range modes. If you are in RWS mode, once you select a target, target. If you press TMS up again, it enters into single target track. You can also enter it from track wall scan mode. If you have a bugged target and you do TWS up, it enters single target track. And same thing with velocity search mode. If you press TMS up, it will go into single target track. Those were all the long range radar modes. Now before I go into the short range radar modes, I want to go over IFF or identify friend and foe. In order to turn IFF on, you put this switch into normal. And if you press TMS left, it will say scan here and if any target returns as a friendly you'll get the little green circle right there. Now when you do a scan it scans your whole radar however you can also scan just where your cursor is looking. Instead of pressing TMS left if you hold it down it will just do an IFF scan where your cursor is looking. All right those were the long range modes now let's go into the short range radar modes. There's two ways you can enter the short range modes. The first way is by clicking this button and going into ACM. The second way is by using the dogfight switch if you have the dogfight switch in the dogfight position, it will enter your short range radar mode and you can press it to the center position to go back to your normal radar mode. As you can see, when I push the dogfight switch, it automatically puts me into the short range radar modes. So once you enter the short range modes, by default, your radar will be off. You need to select a mode. If you press TMS forward, it goes into bore sight mode, which will just try to lock onto the first thing in front of you. If you press TMS aft, it turns the radar back off. And if you press TMS aft again, 
it goes into vertical scan mode, and then once again, TMS aft to turn the radar off. If you press TMS right, it goes into HUD mode. In HUD mode, it tries to just lock on something that's generally in front of you. And the last mode is slewable mode. If you move your cursor around, you can see it says slew, and you can use this to adjust where the radar is looking. Those were all the air-to-air -air radar modes. Let's go over air-to-ground now. You can enter air-to-ground by pressing this and clicking GM. This is just a regular grounds mapping radar. By default, these cursors will be looking at your waypoints. You can move the cursors around if you want with the slew, and you can press CZ or cursor zero here to point it back to your waypoint. You can adjust the range here, and you can also adjust the scan angle like normal. And this setting here says EGM. If you click it, it goes to RBM, which is a faster scan, but it doesn't look as good. If you put it back to EGM, it looks a lot better. If you press the freeze button, obviously it just freezes it and you can click it again to unfreeze. Also this button here that says snow plow, like I mentioned, by default, your cursors just look at your waypoint, but if you press SP, it kind of just moves the cursors directly in front of you. There's this here that says barrow, and if you click it, it says R out. I'm not sure what this does. I'm assuming it has something to do with the altimeter, but the manual didn't mention it, so I'm not sure what this does. If you click override, it will just force your radar to turn off, and you can click it to turn it back on. Now, this button here that says man, if you have it in man, then you need to use these buttons to adjust the range, but if you put it in auto, then you can change the range by just slewing around like this. You can also press the expand button on your stick to zoom in. If you click it, it goes into expand mode, and it zooms in where your cursor is, so if I move my cursor right here, and click the expand button it zooms in right there and you can click it again to zoom in even more and you can click it again to zoom in even more and if you click it once more it goes back to normal mode you can also do it by just clicking this button here now if you press TMS up it'll get a lock and you can press TMS aft to unlock it so you can use this to lock any thing on the ground and the manual said that you can also use it to lock up slow moving ships. The next radar mode is C mode. This is pretty much the same thing as ground mode. The only difference is that the manual said C mode is better for locking up slow or stationary C targets. And the last ground mode is GMT which is ground moving target. This will just show moving targets on the ground obviously. Right now it's kind of hard to see but if you use this button to turn down the brightness of the map you can see See that square right there is a moving target and you can put your cursor over it and press TMS up to get a lock. Once you've locked onto it, if I look at my targeting pod, we can see what that is. And as you can see, that is actually a tank moving right there. So that is a super useful radar mode. You can press TMS aft to unlock it. And the manual said that in GMT mode, you can also use it to lock up fast moving C targets. That was the radar for the Viper. Thanks for checking out this video and I'll see you later.